because this talk is more like a warm-up session to try to convince you that machine learning is a team sport. Machine learning is a team sport. So obviously, this is like kind of a reasoning with analogies. So because we are all data science specialists in a way, we all like analogies, and we are uh, sensitive to the fact that reasoning with analogies is a powerful tool. And if two observations have five features in common, they must be very, very similar. Do you agree? Not true. For instance, this egg conference. It is overcrowded. There is a tight schedule. It's live on the web, probably. Yes, it's live on the web. Okay. It's not about the present. It's about the future, but it's not about the present. And it's in London. So, and well, and you've got lovely birds everywhere. So it's very much alike a royal wedding. So egg conference is a royal wedding. Yeah, thinking with analogy. It's a powerful tool. So let's. Uh, Get further. Team sport feature number one. In team sport, usually, you need superstars, but superstars won't save the day. For instance, even if you got like super strong players during the season, they could get injured. And if you got, if you, if you got someone very, very smart in his team that can use his head, it might not be always for the right reasons, <laughs> obviously. So in machine learning, do you really, really want to be or to have in your team a superstar data scientist? Yeah, that's not clear. You might want like, just to leave your team for Google or Facebook, or just start a startup, which is completely crazy in data science. So yeah. And here in this room, like, raise your hand if you've been either approached by Google, Facebook, or another big companies, or if you want to start a startup in data science. You are all raising your hands in your head. I can see that. Well. So maybe you want actually more uh, to have and become a team coach and have like different kind of players in your team, which actually to lead us to feature number two, which is that you actually need a team formation and kind of utility players in a team. Because if you, even if you got like the best player in the world, it's not always that you can actually, well, get things done. Because if you've got only one kind of player in the team, you pass along the ball, but you don't really score, and uh, that's not good. It's like if you've got a formation only with midfielders that are already to score, but like nobody to keep the goal. Yesterday night, it would have gone very, very bad for Argentina. But so what you actually need is probably more like uh, when you build a data team, and that's actually this not really a joke, like a more balanced formation where you've got a mix of business analysts and data scientists and data engineers that work together and can actually understand how they actually should interact, which is um, actually not so clear. Yeah, I don't know. I, I put some contractors in the bench because I guess you always need more data engineers than you think, but maybe you cannot like, have them all as uh, full-time players. Features number three, motivation is key in team sport, meaning you need this uh, 12th player every time which is usually uh, the audience. So you are my uh, motivation today, I guess. So look at Russia. So Russia performed very, very well during the first two games of uh, the World Cup, not the third one. But that's also because they had very, very good motivation. Like there is someone <laughs> <laughs> behind. <laughs> so the question is, how do you keep your data scientists motivated? That's a great question doing machine learning because it's not always a very funny job. It's not, uh, sometimes you do a data cleansing and data janitorial tasks that are not that funny. And which is actually also a great question when you go uh, and think uh, deeper of the team in general, because in, in a data team, you've got analysts and data scientists and data engineers and different tasks, like at least five, six different kind of tasks from uh, sourcing and cleansing the data to doing business modeling, doing more like actual algorithms and putting things in production. And so you've got things that are motivating for some, but not for the others things that they want to do, but you're not really sure that you want them to do it, and so on. So finding this alignment between motivation and actual skills is actually key if you want your team to actually work properly. Feature number four, you never know how it's going to end, and you need some extra time. In team sports, that's very, very clear. So are there any Swedish in the room? Swedish people? Good. It's good because I don't really want to hurt anyone. But yes, 
Sweden, they could have eliminated, eliminated Germany. I bet on Germany, on Sweden, actually. I cashed out at half time, which was good. But, <laughs> yeah, because I'm also in stats a little bit, so yeah, you, know, you have to even your odds at some point. But yeah, you need to push a machine learning project up until the end, and that's very clear. So there is this study that, um, by Gartner, that said that 85% of big data projects fail. Well, I don't see that myself. Maybe because I've, I've, I've got BS, which is I see mostly uh, my customers as a, as a pool. So, but I don't see most data, big data projects failing. And I think that if you are uh, here at this conference, you also don't see that many data projects failing. So 85% is probably not the right number. Most of them, I think, succeed. But what is true is that actually most of them take more time than we expect. Meaning we expect those projects to be uh, uh, focusing on uh, business analytics and delivering value and taking uh, that much time. But at the end of the day, they take more time, usually because you need to spend more time finding the right data, understanding if you can use it, and so on. And that's true. So you need some extra time in machine learning, too. And feature number five, at the end of the day, only results matter. And I guess that's very, very true for machine learning because, it's, well, we are building machine learning because results do matter compared to explanation to some extent. Meaning, in machine learning, you win because you actually build the right model. We need sport too, I think. Because if you remember like something that occurred uh, five decades ago, four decades ago, I was not even born, yeah, for sure. There was this controversy in the final between uh, England and Germany where uh, the third goal of England was deemed not to be valid, meaning it was not clear whether the ball was crossing the line. But at the end, it was validated, and England won 4-2, if I remember correctly. You probably know better than me. And so there was controversies like for like decades about this goal, just because you had no actual uh, high-quality video in order to, to know what was happening. So even people made some uh, image like uh, digital forensics in order to recreate the scene and try to justify after the fact that the goal was actually valid. But it was like, yeah, 30 years of arguing. So yeah, team sport is about getting results and arguing afterwards. And I guess that machine learning is kind of the same. And so yeah, it did uh, cross uh, the line. So because yeah, machine learning is about uh, machine learning works, meaning you can make it work. But afterwards, you need to argue about it. And so if you are ready today to argue about machine learning after making it work, you are at the right place today at the egg conference. Thank you for that. <laughs>